Mars Incorporated is a giant in the food industry with a fascinating history and exciting backstories. There are few companies that have spread their tentacles across their area of production the way Mars has covered the food industry with its long list of products. Mars is a company that maintains a mysterious appearance in public as its name isn't written on some of its products. Also, only a tiny portion of its history is known to the public. Yet, it's hard to come across a person who has yet to consume any product produced by Mars. The company has a long history dating back to the early 20th century, running through several generations of the family that founded it. The story of Mars is about a sustained struggle for success while dealing with failure and setbacks along the way. Standing on a history that spans over a hundred years, the company has endured different decisive periods in human history – the two world wars, economic depression, and a pandemic. Despite these, Mars Incorporated remains a world-class company in the food industry. Here is the true story of the rise of Mars, Inc. The name Mars rings across all social aspects in the United States and every industrial hub worldwide. The Mars family is known as one of the most successful industrialists around the world. However, the family did not start as the billionaires that they are today. Their story encapsulates the iteration from rags to riches. The idea of the company, Mars Incorporated, can be traced to the beginning of the 20th century. It all started with a man called Franklin Clarence Mars. Mars was born on September 24, 1883 in Minnesota, in the United States, to a gristmill operator father. While growing up, he suffered a mild case of the dreaded polio disease, which made him immobile for some time during his childhood. During this illness phase, his mother, Elva, taught him how to hand dip chocolate candy to cheer him up, as he could not attend school during this period. This led to Mars developing a special affection for chocolates and candies, and by the time he clocked 19 years of age, Mars had started making buttercream candies at home and selling them in his neighborhood. He quickly mastered the art of candy while selling it. In 1902, Mars married a schoolteacher named Ethel Kissick, who gave birth to his first son, Forrest Mars. Mars and his wife divorced in 1910, and he married Ethel Veronica Healy the same year. Healy gave birth to Mars' second child, a girl named Patricia Mars, in 1914. Prior to this time, in the year 1911, Mars had moved with his second wife to Tacoma in Washington State and started a candy factory. The factory could not flourish because it was in the same location with the bigger opposition, Brown and Haley, that was also in the candy business. Mars' factory was eventually shut down and his business crumbled. With his business gone, Mars was facing a very difficult moment. Suddenly, something became clear to Mars. There was no way his business would grow if he operated in the shadow of a bigger competitor. Upon this realization, Mars made the move that would bring him more fortune than he asked for. In 1920, Mars moved back to his home state, Minnesota, and started another candy factory which he named the Morrow Bar Company. He later adopted the name Mars Incorporated. That was how the Mars Empire was born. As a small factory in Minneapolis, Mars gradually grew his business, making his candy and chocolates almost a daily necessity to everyone. The business steadily expanded, and he ventured into other aspects of the food industry. The early years of Mars Inc. were not rosy, and the company reported a loss of $6,000 in 1922. To make things worse, the company's candy was too fragile to withstand the rigors of transportation. Franklin had to improve the quality of his product, which led to the introduction of the first Milky Way candy bar in 1923, a game-changer as it recorded impressive sales. Things started working out well in 1924 when the sales volume exceeded $700,000. With the increase in sales, the company grew rapidly and expanded its operation. It built a new plant in suburban Chicago in 1928. Shortly after its new plant opened in Chicago, the economic depression started and businesses collapsed. Surprisingly, Mars Inc. grew even bigger. The company introduced a new set of products including Mars Almond Bar, Snickers Bar, and Three Musketeers. As the Mars Empire kept growing, Franklin needed support to manage the business effectively, so he hired his son, Forrest E. Mars, to work in the company after he graduated from Yale University. A few years down the line, Franklin and his son Forrest had a misunderstanding that worsened their relationship. The two men could no longer work together in harmony. This made Franklin give Forrest some money and foreign rights to manufacture his products. He also ordered his son to start his own business abroad. This was the turning point of Mars Inc. as they explored the business frontiers of Europe and the rest of the world. 
Forrest then moved to England and established a confectionery and a canned pet food company. His company quickly recorded tremendous success and became a leading manufacturer in England. As the Second World War was underway, Forrest returned to the United States in 1940 and founded M&M Limited in Newark, New Jersey, where he manufactured chocolate candies and a sugar shell. During this time, many stores were struggling to remain in business as a result of the effect of the war. Most of the stores also had to reduce their stock of chocolate in the summer because of the lack of air conditioning, which made the product melt, and this worsened their finances further. Forrest decided to capitalize on this problem by constructing a unique plant that could preserve chocolates for longer periods. With his innovation in place, he was able to sell his candy throughout the year. Meanwhile, Franklin Mars's business kept growing in leaps and bounds. Forrest played the largest role in expanding the business line of Mars, and he spearheaded the entry of Mars into major food products in addition to confectionaries. Having established itself in snacks and confectionaries, producing assorted candies and chocolates, the company entered fully into food making. In 1943, Mars started selling a wide selection of rice products such as whole grain, savory, boil in bag, fast cook, instant, and frozen rice, as well as other products. Mars adopted a special method called parboiling that was first developed in England to process its rice. Using this method, Mars's famous Uncle Ben's rice was launched and it became the talk of the town. An unexpected success followed the launch of Uncle Ben's rice as it sold in the least expected moment. Several months after the first production facility was completed, they began selling rice to the U.S. Army, which they continued to supply throughout World War II. After the war, the company redirected the sales of Uncle Ben rice to the American public, and by 1952, it became the country's number one brand of rice. Uncle Ben's is now part of the leading brands of rice worldwide, sold in more than 100 countries, with manufacturing facilities in the United States, Australia, Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. Surprisingly, Mars did not stop its industrial expansion just in the food industry, as it soon moved to electronics, an industry that already has enough big players. Mars, however, found its feet in the electrical market despite the stiff competition. It also made its entry into technology in 1972 with some important technological innovations and vending machines. The company continued to improve its technological output with services like cashless payment systems, phone services, data acquisition, and laser scanning. Mars eventually merged the tech and services offering arms together with its giant electrical company in 1987, but its food and confectionaries continued to run independently. Over the long years of its history, Mars has continued to thrive along the lines of the Mars family. The Mars family has established itself as a genuine business tycoon, and Mars Inc. has been passed down from generation to generation within the same family lineage. Running a successful venture for more than 100 years is definitely no child's play. As with other big companies, Mars is not entirely without blemishes in its operations across the world. So, let us now turn to the other aspect of Mars Inc. that is not so gratifying. Mars has a suspicious reputation among public circles. The only thing that is certainly known about the company and its operations is that its internal activities do not make it to the news. There's a lot of secrecy around the company, and this has further fueled the controversies around it. Yet, it has been guilty of some ethical misconduct over the years. In 2009, Mars and other candy manufacturers pledged to put an end to the deforestation problem that degraded most of the virgin land in West Africa. However, in 2018, Mars postponed its target date for switching entirely to sustainably produced cocoa from 2020 to 2025. This postponement has caused many people to question the commitment of Mars to fighting deforestation. As the growing demand for raw materials, like cocoa, from big candy firms like Mars has made many farmers in West Africa clear large amounts of their forest so that there would be enough land to plant more cocoa. Being a large multinational, other aspects of its operations have been criticized. Mars faced another serious allegation on the use of child labor. In 2012, Mars signed a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, against the use of the underaged in the production process. This act also restricts Mars from patronizing farmers who use children on their farms. There were claims that Mars breached this MOU by buying farm products from farmers who use illegal lands and children in their farms. Though the company did not directly participate in this act, its patronage of the farmers that engage in child labor is seen as an approval of underage labor. 
Mars had operated in Africa since the early 20th century before many African countries gained independence. During these periods, it was reported that the company got directly engaged in the use of slave labor. These are some of the scandals that have rocked the company over time. While the company has denied any wrongdoing on some of these occasions, it has taken steps to end some of these misdeeds. While it is true that Mars has had its shortcomings in ethical operations, the company is not entirely unconcerned about its misconduct. Mars has taken some concrete actions in order to make things right. It took an important step in 2018, when the company published the following principles that have guided its operations over the years. Quality, responsibility, mutuality, efficiency, and freedom. A year earlier, Mars launched a sustainable generation plan that focused on a healthy planet through improvement in climate change, land and water stewardship, and waste management. This demonstrates its readiness to adopt the use of renewable energy in order to reduce global warming and climate change. As a follow-up to its commitment in 2009, it was the first global chocolate company to pledge to the use of only sustainable cocoa. Five years later, it became the first U.S. company to join RE100, a group of companies vowing to get all their electricity from renewable sources. The company later purchased enough solar and wind power to meet the needs of its operations in different countries like Belgium, Brazil, Lithuania, the United Kingdom, and the United States. All these show how Mars has gone the extra mile to demonstrate its willingness to operate in an environmentally friendly manner. Mars also made one of the biggest moves last year to demonstrate its commitment to doing things right. In June 2022, it announced that it had partnered with Perfect Day Inc. to launch its first ever Earth-friendly and animal-free chocolate innovation in the U.S. named co 2 Coa a healthy choice for consumers who are extra careful of what they eat because Perfect Day uses animal-free dairy protein, making the chocolate entirely free of lactose and cholesterol while wrapped in paper-based packaging. Mars remains a giant in the food industry. Despite all its shortcomings, it has put in a lot of effort to uphold ethical principles in business over the years, keeping to one of Forrest Mars' key guidelines. Good products plus good people makes a good business. This was the story of Mars, Inc. Before taking any of the Mars snacks, make sure you subscribe to Business Capital. And remember, a Mars a day helps you work, rest, and play.